And they never give you credit. It's enough to drive you crazy if you let it. What if we combine recent advances in the fields of computational technology and biotechnology? The love child of such a marriage would resemble something recently developed by researchers. A living robot. Yes, a human-engineered robot that lives like an organism. So how will our futures be with these humanoids? Has technology evolved so far that we have reproducing robots? Curious to know? Let's find out. We will soon be walking through the streets with robots as technology advances, and the robots will go to work just like we always do. It's quite frightening when you think about it. Every day, a robot somewhere is updated and becomes smarter. The year 2020 may be remembered for the COVID-19 pandemic, but researchers in the U.S. accomplished something remarkable this year as well. They created the first living robot. While it is currently the size of a grain of salt, it has some promising future prospects. This bio-robot has been dubbed a xenobot by researchers. A xenobot, as opposed to a typical robot, is a very small robot. It is not made of metal, plastic, or other man-made materials. It is made entirely of organic cellular material. Xenobot has the ability to scurry around or rotate in circles. It can flip backwards like an insect if you flip it on its back. It's essentially an engineered robot, but it's alive. It's natural to be perplexed by the concept of a living robot, and that's okay. According to researchers, this is a completely new life form that you would never have learned about in school or college. Researchers were experimenting with taking real-life cells and manipulating them to function exactly as they desired, similar to other robots developed in recent years. So scientists from Tufts University and the University of Vermont extracted stem cells from an African clawed frog embryo. The stem cells collected by the researchers were of two types, skin cells and heart cells. Skin cells were chosen for their natural ability to bond, whereas heart cells were chosen for their ability to relax and contract. The concept was to combine skin and heart cells in a specific way to create a functional structure with locomotive capabilities. That was the researchers' goal to create an organic robot with a distinct locomotion style. The first step in developing a xenobot was to feed stem cell data into an evolutionary algorithm running on a supercomputer. Based on this information, the supercomputer quickly generated millions of cell configurations, which researchers could then examine for the desired outcome. Natural selection was used by the evolutionary algorithms used here to create a xenobot that resembles a real organism. The researchers who worked on the first xenobot wanted to achieve the desired type of locomotion. As a result, only the best configuration capable of achieving the desired locomotion was advanced to the next stage of development. Only a few computer-generated configurations were chosen after hundreds of tests to get the configuration just right. Researchers were finally successful in developing a blueprint for a new life form by leveraging the power of supercomputing and evolutionary algorithms. All they had to do was make them. Sounds easy, doesn't it? It isn't, however. To make the computer-generated design a reality, researchers painstakingly performed microsurgery with tiny forceps and tweezers under a microscope. Researchers had to take one cell at a time, connect it to another, and then repeat the process until the final structure of 2,000 cells was created. Fortunately, cells have a natural tendency to stick together, so researchers' efforts were aided by a tailwind. Nonetheless, given the thousands of cells involved, it was a laborious and time-consuming process. After many hours of labor, the cell assembly was completed and a new organism was created. These newly created xenobots were capable of propulsion, traveling in a straight line or simply moving in circles. First-generation xenobots have a lifespan of about 7 to 10 days, but because they are made of living cells, they can heal themselves throughout their lives. Despite being ripped in half, they were able to recover. All of this sounds exciting, but these xenobots have a few strange characteristics, one of which is something called emergent behavior. Although we have a good understanding of how cells work, something strange happens when they are stacked together in large heaps. This is known as emergent behavior arising from vastly connected cells, but what exactly is emergent behavior? Certain functions cannot be performed by a single cell, but they can be performed when multiple cells are grouped together. Humans are examples of this behavioral shift from a single cell to a multi-celled structure. Our bodies contain trillions of cells, but none of them have their own consciousness. However, consciousness emerges when they are combined in a specific configuration, i.e. the body. Despite the fact that the first-generation xenobot was made up of 2,000 cells, we expect to scale them up in the future. Many scientists believe that emergent behavior will manifest itself in more noticeable ways at this point. Xenobots, for example, could change their path on their own or turn and return to where they came from due to emergent behavior. They could also communicate with other xenobots and collaborate on a task. So while we created a miniature xenobot that works as researchers desire, 
Xenobots may develop consciousness and be able to think for themselves in the future. For the record, this is only one of several possible outcomes, and we have yet to see tangible evidence of emergent behavior in Xenobots. Our goal is to create Xenobots that can help us live better lives. We want to use them specifically to solve problems that plague our planet. Some game-changing future applications of Xenobots have been proposed. Let's take a look at some of them. The medical field is expected to benefit the most from advances in Xenobot technology. Scientists may develop Xenobots to detect and fight cancer in the future. Scientists are currently faced with the challenge of removing tumorous cells because when they insert a foreign object to work on the tumor, the body immediately recognizes it as a foreign body and initiates an immune response. This immune response has the potential to complicate overall cancer treatment. It is possible to create Xenobots from the cells of the actual patient. When Xenobots are implanted into the body to detect, remove tumorous cells, the body does not recognize them as an alien entity, allowing unwanted immune responses to be avoided. Similarly, Xenobots could be used to unclog dangerous clogging in the arteries of heart patients. Even with these limited applications, Xenobots would be a game-changer in the medical field. These Biobots applications aren't limited to the medical field. Xenobots have the potential to save our planet. Because of increased industrial activity in recent decades, the planet's oceans and other water bodies have become severely polluted, as waste materials from industries and factories have been recklessly dumped into the oceans and nearby water bodies. As a result, water bodies are littered with microplastics that are difficult to recycle or process. Perhaps in the future, scientists will be able to create xenobots that can detect and break down microplastics. If not, they could clump them together and collect them. These xenobots could even be used to detect radioactive contaminants in oceans or other potentially hazardous areas. Now, while world-saving xenobots sound like a cool idea, there are other implications. Xenobots are neither machines nor animals if you think about it. They are something completely new, something in the middle. So perhaps we should reconsider how we classify living and non-living things. Researchers have acknowledged that while the current generation only consists of skin and heart cells, future generations of xenobots may include cells from the nervous system, blood vessels, or even reproductive parts. These additions undoubtedly necessitate redefining what we mean by life. Michael Anderson, a machine ethics expert, believes that applied ethicists should be involved in the early stages of creating and developing these fundamentally new forms of life in order to draft their responsibilities and rights. After all, once these xenobots have advanced enough to be cognitive, we'll need a framework in place that clearly defines their roles and rights. Researchers working on first-generation xenobots have fully acknowledged and labeled these ethical concerns as uncharted territory. They've invited people to come and talk about the future implications of this new breed of bots. This way, even the general public will be able to understand what is going on. Participating in the discussion allows policymakers to develop better policies for regulating them and ensuring that we do something positive with this incredible technology. Still watching? We knew you'd love our video. Well, we'd be even happier if you could just hit that like button. Coming back to the scenario, what do we think about our future with robots? Well, future research will look into the possibility of developing larger and more useful xenobots that can solve real-world problems. Further xenobots could deliver drugs, unclog blocked arteries, clean up microplastics, and detect the presence of toxic materials resulting in a very different future. And with that being said, it's time to end our video. But before that, we'd like to know your opinion about this. What do you think about having a family with these humanoids? Let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more amazing videos like this. We'll see you in the next video.